Infancy Narratives of Jesus an Introduction It is quite surprising that only Matthew and Luke report on the infancy of Jesus whereas Mark begins his gospel with the proclamation of John the Baptist and the baptism of Jesus at the start of the public ministry of Jesus while John on the other hand does not talk at all about the early life of Jesus why then did Matthew and Luke include these early stories of Jesus Before we can address this question a more basic question can be asked is what is the purpose of the infancy narratives in Matthew and Luke are they meant to tell stories about early life of Jesus why do they selectively tell only certain stories surrounding the birth of Jesus what is common in the infancy narratives of Matthew and Luke and what are the differences The gospels were written many years after Jesus's death and biblical scholars postulate that the following dates first Paul 50 AD then Mark 65 to 67 AD then Matthew and Luke 80 to 85 AD and then John 85 to 95 AD We must also remember that while there was a definitive full revelation of Jesus at the passion death and resurrection the full impact of this revelation can only be gradually understood by the followers In fact there was a gradual development in the understanding of Jesus in the first century following his death there was a deepening in the understanding of the life and the central event of Jesus as time went on It is important to realize that the gospels are not uh, biographical or historical accounts of Jesus's life death and resurrection but rather theological reflection about the historical person of Jesus and his saving event their central purpose is what they teach us about who Jesus is It is for this reason it is often said rather cryptically that the gospels are written backwards the first thing the early christian community related and wrote was the passion death and resurrection of jesus which is exemplified in the letters of saint paul it is only later that they started reflecting and writing on the public ministry of jesus as in gospel of mark then the stories of jesus is infancy are therefore the last things to be ever written about jesus and i know we are product of very mature theological thought Therefore it is important to realize that the infancy narratives in Matthew and Luke are almost the last parts of the gospel to be written and contain very well developed and profound theological understanding of Jesus. Their primary purpose to give us a Christological understanding of who Jesus is. That is he is the son of God through the virginal conception of Mary by the power of the Holy Spirit as well as the son of David through his adoption by Joseph and hence has a right credential to be the promised Messiah of Israel. Such a nuanced understanding of Jesus is developed through a rich, complicated and creative narrative which brings to the central revelation of God about the person of Jesus right at his conception and at his birth. It therefore advances that the Christological revelation of Jesus from the other Christological moments in the gospel such as baptism, his transfiguration and his death and resurrection and now to his conception and birth. The infancy narratives also give us hints about the response to the revelation of God namely either you accept it or deny persecute it and thus can be seen as gospels in miniature prefiguring in way all that would happen in life of Jesus just as one often writes the introduction to a long essay at the very end so also infancy narratives are written as introduction to the gospel telling the reader of what to expect in the life of Jesus The second primary purpose of writing this infancy narrative form a bridge between the Old Testament and New Testament. They are written in order to prepare the reader coming from the Old Testament background about what to expect in the gospel ahead and also to make a transition easier. Hence the infancy narratives are particularly rich in direct or indirect allusions and quotations from the Old Testament in order to show that Jesus is the fulfillment of the Old Testament and that there is a direct continuity between the Hebrew scriptures and good news of Jesus. while it is very obvious in the gospel of uh, matthew but this is more complicated gospel of luke if we admit that the infancy narrative last parts of gospel to be written chronologically an important question can be raised about the historicity most christians often upset by the question scholars ask about the historicity of these events narrated did the three king actually visit the child jesus at bethlehem was there a massacre of infants as reported in gospel of matthew These problems of historicity get compounded when we realize that the infancy account described gospel of Matthew and the gospel of Luke cannot be easily reconciled. While there are certain creative attempts to do so it becomes an academically unattainable task. So, did the events really happen or were they made up stories about the birth of Jesus? A further problem of eyewitness account complicates the issue further. While popular explanation revolves around the fact that these tradition handed down to Joseph and Mary respectively to the evangelists the Matthew and Luke respectively there is no corroborating evidence to support such views either from scripture or from the early tradition of the church 
However, it is important for people not to get stuck with the problem of historicity, but to realize that the primary purpose of infancy narratives are not to recount history, but primarily used as vehicles to expound upon the evangelist theology. Scholars' uh, research is now moving past this question of historicity to move fruitful stage, which seeks to recover the value of the infancy stories as theology. What is the theological message that this evangelist seeks to convey through these stories? The his- question of historicity is secondary and not central to the value and the message of the narratives. So we have come to realize that infancy narratives are valuable theological as well as other parts of the gospel stories. Secondly, we really cannot say definitely whether an event happened or did not happen. To rule out an event would require evidence which far exceeds what has been arrived at through the present historical studies of the gospel and the Bible in general. In fact, we don't have direct access to the historical events and really cannot decide definitely for or against historicity of the event. But on the other hand, the question of historicity should not distract us from the main theological message of the infancy narratives. When we quote Raymond Brown, uh, to give the infancy narrative less value than other parts of gospel is to misread the mind of the evangelist for whom the infancy narratives were fitting vehicles of a message that they wanted to convey. Indeed, from this point of view, infancy days are not an embarrassment but a masterpiece, perhaps precisely because the material has been less fixed in the course of apostolic preaching. The evangelists exercise greater freedom of composition in the infancy narratives. One is hard-pressed to find elsewhere in the gospel theology so succinctly and imaginatively presented. Very important to realize the purpose of infancy narratives in Matthew and Luke are different for each other. Certain traditions are common to both like virginal conception is traced to a much earlier date. Similarly, scholars like Raymond Brown and others could trace how the two evangelists rework some material and tradition which are older than their own gospels. But the way they reworked them and included them in the gospels are distinctively their own and thus making them important introduction to the gospels themselves. References from Raymond Brown